Hey guys, today we're outside, something different, not at the PC. And I'm on my daily walk, getting some sun, going to the, to the beach here at Tokyo Bay. And every time I pass, there's this cool structure, it looks a bit like a water pump. I think it's a water pump, but it reminds me of one of these turrets in Fallout 4. So what I was thinking we could do is take some pictures of it, then bring it to a PC, have some fun with, you know, AI, bring it to Photoshop, work on it, bring it to Blender and then see what develops, right? I want to show you how to start thinking like an artist, how to take stuff around you and start, you know, improving your artistic sense and sort of a ability to think like an artist using AI as a tool, because that's how it should be done. So let's get started. All right, guys, we're back in the studio and I dropped these images into ChatGPT and I'm just going to give you an overview of what happened here. I dropped them in the ChatGPT and gave him a simple prompt to find me turrets that in a way going to follow the idea and the design, something between Fallout 4 turrets and these kind of water pump images uh, containing some of these elements and design cues, etc and uh, it you know it found a few images so what i've done is i i told chat gpt to take this image because i kind of like it and i think it's by sergey tiapkin by the way sergey is a really cool guy is is a creator of uh, this add on zen uv and zen barbecue but anyway uh, i asked chat gpt to take this idea and jam it together with uh, with these uh, water pumps and it gave me something like this which is actually pretty freaking cool looks a bit like a like a rat with ears that look like these launchers and then has an asymmetrical element here that very closely follows this water pump a bit more sci-fi on the top down the bottom but we could just kind of work with this i like the idea okay so what we're gonna do we're gonna grab that right and we're gonna put it in in Photoshop, okay? So now what we're gonna do, we're gonna clean it up a bit, okay? We're gonna select this sky color here. We're going to grab this tool here and select this whole thing. So we're gonna have a selection, select that, and we could drop a mask on this model like that. And then we're going to grab a brush a white one and uncover some of this you know this environment here and we're we going to one more time grab this color and pop it here in the background there we go so you see now what i have is i have this um, very clean image of this turret and now the 2D to 3D software will not get confused on what I want. I want to also remove this nonsense here. So let's just nuke this and same here. All right. There we go. And you can save that, right? So next we're going to go to Mesh AI and what you want to do is you want to go to Image to 3D and you want to pop your image in, right? So we're going to drop it in here and you have different settings here. I'm just going to keep it on, on default and I'm just going to click, you know, generate. All right, so it's finished. All right, so we got four ideas here, four kind of iterations and, you know, you can choose any of those. It doesn't really matter which one, to be honest because we're not going to be using this as a final model we're going to be using it just as a guidance to create a model i think the one on the top right is better i like the uh, some of these uh, kind of ideas and details that it created it could use it as a reference i think i'm going to snatch this one uh, so we're going to use the max poly count and we don't want textures and we're going to confirm so you can download it here and you can choose the type of file, obviously. So we're not going to be resizing it. Um, FBX is fine and it's better than OBJ and you just download it. Cool. So we got our OBX. So let's just uh, bring it in. I'm going to be using machine tools to bring it in. So control S and import FBX. 
All right, so here it is. And you see, the, the way it works, the way you need to think about it, right? This is not a finished model, obviously. And we're gonna sort of keep it on the side here. But the way you use it and the way you have to think about it is just a guideline to help you snatch the right proportions, okay? So for example, if I was to, you know, start modeling this, which by the way, we, we could actually go ahead and model this, right? So if you're interested in me modeling this turret and kind of, you know, iterating my own ideas on top of it, let me know. And we can run a tutorial on that. And if I see enough interest, I'll do it. So just leave a comment and let me know if you would like me to, you know, to have fun with this. But basically what I would do, I would align elements using obviously add-ons because reasons. And in this case, it didn't work. Hang on a second, why it didn't work? Let me just bring it closer here. GX, there we go. And then we're gonna mirror this across. This one is not in the middle. That's the problem, right? Let me put it in the middle more or less. There we go. Put this one in the middle. There we go. Alt X and we're going to snatch it to cursor. Boom, there we go. That's better, right? So that's that. And then we need uh, one cube in the middle. Uh, so grab a cube in the middle here. And Obviously, we would need to, let me just uh, I'll see that so we can see through. We could run cuts on this cube, right? So D and cuts with an end gun. So we could run just, you know, rough cuts here, right? And these are very rough block out because that's the point here, right? We're not doing anything, anything spectacular at the moment. Just a very, very, very rough block out. We just establishing basic you know basic proportions and basic areas where we're gonna be placing certain elements right so you know that's the that's the whole concept here basically right you're not supposed to be accurate here you're supposed to just you know riff so q alt here macro right so we're gonna do that perfect and then we need you know this element on the here in the middle so we could just you know borrow this and in fact, what we could do is we could nuke all the bullions. Uh, so just put it in here, make it smaller. And we could uh, run a loop over there and then extrude it up and then scale it on the Y like this, right? And do something like this here. And obviously we would need this here in the bottom, but we can do it later. And this basic, like I said, is going to just create, you know, the basic, basic block out, right? So put this element here and, you know, grab this one here and control plus this F. And then we're going to create another one here. So shift curve extract, make it larger. Right. And then you could deform it, you know. So we could uh, grab it to loco and start deforming it. So let's just apply it. And then we could deform it. So, you know, SZ. And scale it here a little bit. Or maybe we could scale it on the origin. So, or even from both sides. Like this, right? See what I mean? Pop it in here for a sec. And this should do. So now if I toggle this off, right? We have a very basic block out, right? Very basic block out. But the point is of this whole exercise is to get stuff in places when they should, you know, where the elements should be located. So you got this kind of like a very basic idea of uh, where to place stuff and once you do that you remove the base mesh this one you keep this one to the side so you can actually have some you know draw some ideas from it but now you look at this you know this um, block out here and you start riffing off of it okay you start you know working this uh, this shape and you could use for it additional references somewhere on the side from maybe you know from art station or Pinterest or wherever, you know, find some different types or ideas of military equipment and start having some fun, you know, with, with these shapes, right? 
So we could, for example, bevel this here, run a bevel on top of this, just a thin bevel, and then we could start, you know, maybe running some cuts here, etc. Right? Let me just turn off the cyclic uh, face. There we go, you know, something like that, right? X and boom. And you get the point, right? And then we can start, you know, kind of fleshing out all these elements and so on and so forth. And the same here, you know, with with this element, we could just start refining it, adding stuff on the bottom, you know, like playing, playing with the bottom area here, maybe run some knife here, right? And then grab this element here. Let me just apply this sharpen. Um, let me just run it again. Let's just run again the knife here like that. Okay, so space, boom, and just grab that, right? Then maybe run some, you know, I don't know, LTM marker like this and, you know, have some fun with this shape. So, you know, you just, you can start riffing on top of it, right? So like I said, you look at the references that you have somewhere on the side, you look at this one at the same time, you think what you want to do and you start kind of jamming all these shapes together and changing stuff on the go, right? But again, like I said, if you want me to go ahead and model this, we can do that. And I'll show you exactly how I would, you know, create something original out of this. But if you're going to start thinking that way, okay, and if you're going to start working that way, you're going to be able to boost creativity and stimulate your brain to come up with shapes you will never think of. Because it's all about visual cues. You're going to get inspired by specific elements from other creators from other ideas from other models and because you already have a block out in place you're going to be able to put these pieces you know much easier together because you have the skeleton all you need to do now is sort of make it all play nicely together right you can also change things you can change your ideas you know you can evolve something you could make stuff you know thicker thinner larger whatever but again you got this basic block out in proportions laid out you know here in this example and all you need to do is kind of work with this shape that's all okay so that's the way to work with ai right now i think and this is going to be getting better and better because ai is going to be getting better so you're going to get you know more examples of really interesting art from other people and you can draw ideas from these you can jam them together you know on the screen so you don't have to do it in your head you can do it on the screen. It's a huge advantage because you can react immediately to something that you tangibly see on the screen. It's much more difficult to imagine these things in your head, much easier to see them on a screen, just like as if you were drawing, right? And iterating different ideas. You know, like concept designers, when they draw, what they do, they create multiple iterations of one idea and eventually they'll land on a shape they like. This is kind of the same thing, but using AI. So what you do is you use AI to help you stimulate your, you know, imagination and kind of help you with coming, you know, with creating these visual cues in your head. And when you see something that you like, you know, your mind's going to click and you say, yeah, that's, that's what I want to do. Right. And the more you practice, the better you're going to get at it. And um, eventually I think it's going to help you tremendously improve um, your imagination and you're sort of like an artistic direction, which is what you want to develop. It's really important to kind of understand what you want to do, this direction as an artist, and what kind of style of art you want to get into. Because the, the whole point here is to help you flesh out a personal style eventually, and sort of train your mind like a muscle to become stronger and better, you know, so you don't get stuck and sit there at, you know, with open blender looking at a cube, not having a bloody clue what to do with it, right? Because a lot of people have this problem. The jump from not being able to do anything and actually start modeling when you sit up in Blender and just grab a cube and start riffing is a massive jump. And this could actually help you tremendously close that gap. Okay? It's like a bridge, you know what I mean? Anyway, like I said, if you want me to model this and kind of bring it further, let me know in the comments. If I see a lot of interest, then I, you know, I'm going to go ahead and record a video. Okay. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.